So we talked about what polarized light is. We talked about how we can tell polarized light apart from other types of light. How we can tell filters apart from polarizing filters, depending on whether or not they can block vertically or horizontally polarized light. But what would be the evolutionary advantage? I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson today that some animals can see in polarized light. So let's get back to how vision works in general. So this is showing up a little blurry, and that's not my intention, but these are the cells that occur in the eyes of man's best friend, doggos. Dogs have color vision that can see two specific shades, blue and yellow. Any other shades would be some combination of white, gray, or black. So with dog vision, they'd see blue and yellow and some of the ones in between. Whereas you and I have three color vision. We see blue, green, and red. Now that means comparatively, a human's view of color is very different from a dog's. But we're not the best vision by far. Okay, if this is us, humans have a blue cone, a cell in our eyes that's sensitive to blue, a cell that's sensitive to reddish yellow, and a cell that's sensitive to green. Well, bees can see a lot of those colors plus into the ultraviolet. Bees also have polarized light filters that occur at the top of their eyes because they use polarized light as seen from the sky for homing or guidance back to the hive. We're not exactly sure how that works because we can't go ask a bee what it perceives, but in dissecting bees' eyes, we know that it has the ability to see polarized light, but only in the top half of the eye. Now, birds. We don't think birds can see polarized light, but they do have an advantage over humans. Compared to humans, bird eyes actually have four photoreceptors, four different types of cells that can see light. So they can see a reddish yellow, a greenish blue, a solid blue, and then this 370 nanometers, well, that's in the ultraviolet. So in addition to all the colors we see, they can see even more. But that's not all. Check out the eye of the mantis shrimp, where we only have three photoreceptors and no polarized light filter. Well, hmm, the mantis shrimp. Each one of these peaks represents a, a different color photoreceptor that it's sensitive to. So it can see all sorts of colors of light and polarized light. In addition to seeing the polarized light for homing reasons like bees, we think the mantis shrimp can use this polarized light vision because remember how polarized light changes when it reflects off non-metal objects? Well, guess what guys? Fish are non-metal objects. We think that the mantis shrimp could use this to hide from predators, but also mantis shrimp are predators themselves. They could use this to help find anomalies in the seafloor. In this camera that humans have created using polarized light vision, the top of the ocean, like the ocean surface at the top of the water there, looks like a different color than the fish because they're at different angles, hence giving slightly different angles of polarization that we could tell apart. The mantis shrimp would be able to see slightly different angles and polarization on the surface of the sand to be able to tell where its prey are. So the creature with by far the most sensitive eyes to polarized light is the cuttlefish. When scientists dissect the eyes of the cuttlefish, we found out that the cuttlefish can see polarization within one degree. What that means is if a surface is even one degree tilted, well, that cuttlefish can see it as a completely different color as all the other objects around it. Again, great for finding prey, great for avoiding predators, but scientists believe that this could be even used to help 
the cuttlefish design its camouflage. Scientists believe that they could use this to help communicate with other creatures around it. So maybe we don't have polarized light vision, but lots of other creatures do, which is kind of cool. All our eyes over millions of years of evolution have changed to fit our natural surroundings. So whereas yesterday we talked about how our eyes accommodate with the light given to us, today we figured out how different animals adjusted to the world around them using polarized light vision and what that means. Tomorrow we'll work on how we see color and how uh, that perception partially occurs in our brains. Right? So best of luck guys, have a great day. Oh, but before I go, I know it's not necessary, but definitely check out that secret invisible computer screen video that I'm posting at the end, because even if I'm not asking any follow-up questions to it, it is super duper cool. And one of the coolest demos I can show you in a classroom, but now we have to do on a screen.